Welcome back to TechWise TV. So glad you chose to join us. Today we are learning about the new Catalyst 9000 family of switches with capabilities for doing application hosting. Now my first reaction, haven't we had application hosting on switches already? Or for those of you not that familiar with it, why would we? Well, short answer, it's completely different now in a great way. Plus, think about IoT, security, performance. What do they have in common? Well, they all offer unique abilities when placed in specific locations on the network. Well, these switches are built on an x86 CPU architecture, all running the same open iOS XE operating system, which runs Linux under the covers. And these switches now support native Docker applications. So two big things for you to pay attention to here. Number one, the power and control that this now affords you. Plus, the ease of orchestrating everything through Cisco DNA Center. All that's completely new. Well, Mohammed's going to join me in the lab so we can see exactly how to install, deploy, and control any application you may need off the shelf or homegrown. But first, Anoop is here to explore a few scenarios where this may be perfect for the challenges that you're dealing with right now and why Cisco's taking a hands off. You can use any type of app you need, that kind of approach right now. Well, Anoop, welcome to TechWise TV. Thank you, Rob, and great to be back. Well, it's fun to have you here because you guys, especially when it comes to now this entire family now with Catalyst and the, the continued investment that is made, there's new stuff to talk about. Now we're talking about application hosting, um, which I thought we were already doing, but you were saying, well, Rob, it's different than it's been before. Can you tell me more about that? Sure, Rob. So as you know, the Catalyst 9K has been fundamentally changing networking. Mm -hmm. we, when we launched the Cat 9K, we spoke about the powerful x86 CPU on the Cat 9K. Right. That was to enable application hosting. Okay. We are making that real now. We are launching Docker container-based app hosting environment on the Cat 9K, starting with the 9300 series. Okay, well that'll make things a whole lot easier, I would imagine. Now for anybody that didn't, maybe didn't fully understand, well why would I run applications on my Switch? Because we don't usually think of it in that way. What kind of examples or use cases would you say, hey, this is what people either are already doing or are gonna wanna do? Sure, Rob. So data is becoming more important than ever. Sure. New technologies like artificial intelligence and machine learning is giving us new intelligence from the data. The Cat 9K with OpenIOS XE software operating uh -huh. system and the UADP ASIC allows us to extract new data from the network. But it's not just the network that is sending the data. Really? The clients and the applications are also sending data. Okay. And the deluge of data from these three places is basically creating a situation that is overwhelming a centralized processing of the data. Huh. Okay. The network edge is the most efficient place to be able to run the distributed processing of this data. And that's basically what we are enabling with the application hosting environment on the Cat 9K. Okay, but so if you don't mind, I want to double down on that a little bit. So if we simplify and if we take a look at what type of things would I really want to be doing right off the bat, because I agree with your premise, I agree with what you're saying, and especially it makes sense we can do a lot of processing here and then send summarized information through, reduce uh, stuff happening on our WAN links, uh, uh, make production you know, out at the edge where it needs to be done so we can turn it around faster perhaps. A lot of different applications there. But uh, you were mentioning there's like three, two or three different areas right. that you say, hey, these are prime. People are wanting to do it for these reasons. What, what were those again? Yeah, so we can broadly classify them into three areas. Okay. Um, sensing the threat closer to the source and preventing the threat from propagating into the network. Okay, That's so security. one, security. Okay. The second one is uh, distributed processing for IoT, bringing the cloud closer to the edge. Ah, and the okay. examples here are IoT um, applications like AWS Greengrass or Azure IoT Edge. Okay, okay. And the third uh, use case would be agents for ongoing networking, monitoring, and troubleshooting. Okay. Okay, well, that makes sense. Okay, because I can actually see there's a lot of value, because what you're saying here is there's, there's a unique reason for being at these places in the network, and that could be a viewpoint or perspective that allows you to do better things for, say, performance monitoring or security, Correct. and especially from the security principle of let's deal with things as far out <laughs> you know, from our critical centralized infrastructure, perhaps. Um, so let's talk about application vendors. and. Who, what kind of vendors are, is it just Cisco makes these things or what kind of vendors are people using for this? So we made a conscious decision to use the Cat 9K as an enabling platform. Oh, okay. And that's the reason why we picked Docker-based containers. That makes sense. You could just take any Docker app off the shelf, run it on the Cat 9K. And Docker is also known to be developer friendly. True. So you can build your own app as well. Okay. Secondly, we are also announcing 
uh, ecosystem exchange via DevNet for the Catalyst 9K, okay. where anybody is free to come in and publish their content, okay. and the users are free to download their content of choice. Okay. Okay, so you've really opened this up. So off the shelf or roll your own. Uh, you guys have, have enabled all of this by focusing on a platform. So kind of reading between the lines here, what I don't hear you saying is, okay, here's the two or three Cisco applications that we have deemed uh, you can take advantage of. You're saying it could be even competitive to Cisco, but you don't care? Actually, that is accurate. Okay, we, all right. We really don't care what applications are being hosted. Okay. And, uh, we are allowing people to build their own apps, bring their own apps, and that's the reason why the ecosystem exchange on DevNet is available for you. All right. Well, in my preparation, this is one big question. I hope you're okay with this. Uh, and this, because this makes complete sense to me, but I saw it raised that there's a concern, potentially, with when you talk about putting applications on something mission critical like a switch, how do you keep the two from interfering with each other? Because it feels like that could be a recipe for something out of control. So there are actually two important considerations here. Okay. One is, is it secure? And second one is, is the app going to compete for resources, resources. from the switch? That's a good point, so delineation there. So security, what, what more Correct. on that? Let's focus on security. Okay. The Docker environment is completely isolated from the switch operating system. And so any vulnerability or malware that the app could bring along with it, it never affects the switch. Okay. Secondly, the data that the app generates is encrypted using a 256-bit key, ah. and so you don't have to worry about data loss from the app. That's interesting, so that's built in, no matter what app you're using, Correct. we've already kind of taken care of that communication channel. Correct. Okay, now you're talking about resources though as well, so what else would we talk right. about? Right, the app hosting environment has its own set of resources from a CPU, memory, and storage point of view. So completely distinct from what the switch needs to do its job. Dedicated, okay. it's dedicated, and it of course has the ability to expand into unused resources, but then the operating system on the switch always gets priority when it needs. Okay. Secondly, the hosting environment has line rate gigabit links from the UADP ASIC, which allows you to stream live traffic to the app hosting environment and run analytics on that live traffic. In summary, you don't have to worry about what kind of app you're hosting. The switch is always able to run its critical tasks. That's good. So you guys have obviously thought through that in a few different angles than even I had considered. Uh, one other thing that I'm not sure we entirely covered, but in terms of how management is handled or orchestration, you guys have spent some time saying, you know what, we've got customers with a lot of switches out there. How is that now being handled? Right. So that's a really important point, Rob. Uh, trying to orchestrate the app on thousands of switches could get very tedious. Sure. And so what we have done here is with the Cisco DNA Center, we have introduced a guided workflow for app hosting that allows you to spin up the app on thousands of network nodes with a few simple clicks. Okay. So, so orchestration is a piece of cake now. Gotcha, orchestration's a piece of cake. Okay, so DNA Center, people are probably already using that in a lot of situations now. There's continued value there as well in terms of handling the orchestration. Uh, Off-the-shelf applications, roll your own. You guys have made it very easy to focus on being a platform now with the native Docker support. Anything else we need to cover? Be a good job. That's awesome, Anoop, thank you so much. I'm gonna go check in with Muhammad in the lab, see how all this works. Looks like you're about ready. All right, Muhammad, hey, welcome back to TechWise TV. Hey, Rob, good I to think, talk to you again. I think you may have actually the record for the most number of appearances here. So you're, you're obviously playing oh. in the right new areas <laughs> within Cisco. Maybe in the last two years, yeah. since we introduced the Cat 9K. That's actually, well, okay, now you've revealed what, this, what the source of continuation is here. So, okay, we have a 9300 here. We're talking about application hosting, and I'm hoping you can give us more details about how all this kind of comes together. Yes, application hosting on the Catalyst 9K, and we are starting with Catalyst 9300 here. The Catalyst 9300 is coming up with a Docker engine, is starting 16.12.1, okay. which is in July. Okay. And our one command center, your favorite DNA, Cisco DNA Center, Cisco DNA Center right. is going to be the orchestration tool for the application hosting as well. Okay, so right. native Docker running on the Catalyst 9300 to start. We're coming out in July, specifically starting with just that platform and then orchestrated through Cisco DNA Center to make it all easy, because obviously we're always talking about multiple switches. Exactly. Okay. So the foundational elements of the Catalyst 9000 that we have is powerful. We have talked about UADP many times. Absolutely. We have iOS XE, which is a modernized and uh, a very flexible and powerful operating system. Right. Uh, we have talked about x86-based CPU, 
very unlike traditional switches, we have x86 based CPU across the most of the Catalyst 9K family. Okay. Those are the elements that really make application hosting possible from architecture perspective. Right, okay. Now when you have x86 based CPU, that really means that you can go and host any applications off the shelf. You can build your own, or you can pick it up from somewhere and start hosting it because most of the applications out there are built for x86 based systems. Right, okay, we got the right foundation, okay. Right. Now, if you have the support in the iOS XC, mm -hmm. in the operating system, right. and you have x86 based CPU, what else do you need to host application? The only other thing is you have to go and store that application somewhere. Yeah, yeah, it's right? in memory. And traditionally in network switches, we did not have a lot of storage, right? Right, okay. Uh, mostly, you know, it's it, it, 4 gig, 8 yeah. gig, maybe 16 gig. Or was this what most. the switch needs for the most part, right? right? We yeah. don't need that. But in the Catalyst 9K family, we thought about a lot of things that can happen in future. Okay. And we had the provision to have external storage that can go in hundreds of gigs. Ah, uh, okay. On the Catalyst 9300, we have 120 gig storage capacity okay. with a USB, which okay. is right here. Well, right. and that's what I want to make sure is understood because so this is a 9300, which is the first one we're coming out with this on before it comes out in additional software releases mm -hmm. on other platforms. But you've got there's USB connectivity on the front panel right. as well as the back, but we can only use one of these for Great this. Great point. Correct? Great okay. point. So the front panel one is can be used for um, for you know X putting an image or grabbing a log file, okay. those kind of things. So console we, we can do type that. stuff that yes. we may have done in the past. Okay. Traditional. Okay. Uh, on the back. We'll this spin this is, sucker around here. Show us where this goes. Yeah. So we, Let's look at this here. We have a slot for USB, okay. right? Where you can have this Cisco USB, which is 120 gig. Okay. You can insert it here, and you can get the additional storage. Okay. Now, on this 120 gig, you can have different applications installed. So multiple applications can run on that as... Uh, no problem at all. It's not about one per USB, and there's only one USB. I mean, you, okay. can, you, you can put any number of applications. Up to your memory limit. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Oh, that makes complete sense. Okay, and it's nice. So, that, And also, that's a Cisco part number for that specific USB stick. That's true. Okay. That's true. Let's make sure we're clear on all that yep. stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we've got that here. So what else is important to understand? All right. Now, we have the components. Now, uh, how do we actually connect the Docker with the application yeah. to the switch, right? It's all virtual, it's all inside here. Right. But to, to make it easy to understand, what we are really doing is, here's your application. Of course, the application has a virtual ethernet interface. Right. And that gets connected to what we call it app gigabit ethernet port. This okay. is a one gig port, right, that's dedicated for the application. Okay. So you can stream up to one gig there. Oh, okay. Right? okay. Um, this is an L2 connectivity, which means you can take multiple VLANs in there. Okay. Um, and depending on the application and the application types, different types of application will have different requirements. Some of the applications can run with just one port. Some of the applications will require multiple ports. Okay. Um, but you can trunk all of them with this port. This okay. is all configurable. When Once we go to the DNA center, I'm going to show you how oh, it works. Perfect. Okay. All right. Okay. That makes sense. Let's talk about security because that is yeah. one of the important points. Yeah, this is mission critical gear. So exactly. we need to think about how do we protect well, how do we protect it, period, right? Security perspective as well as from a resource perspective. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. This is absolutely mission critical devices that are in the network. Right. And the other part is we have never done this before. Um, so we have made conscious decisions to make sure that it's super secure. Okay. And we have multiple things in the system that ensures the security. So this is storage is going to be encrypted with AES-256, okay. right? Which means all of your data is protected. That's okay. number one. Number two is somebody, if somebody takes this USB and puts it somewhere else, it really needs a passcode, right? Ah, so it's not usable anywhere else. That's right. So the switch has the passcode. It has to match with the passcode that you configure it okay. on the USB as well. So that's, that's on the storage side is fully protected. Okay. From the application itself and the operating system, the operating system is running in a completely different space. We have made a different user name space for the hosted Dockers and okay. applications. So you're talking about right? no access to the kernel whatsoever. There is no way um, the That's applications can get to 
the kernel yeah. or to the iOS operating system. That's, right? that's a check mark everybody's going to have. Yes, yes, that's good. Absolutely, okay. that's important. The other part is when you are on a system where you are using the shared CPU right. and shared memory, you want to make sure that you don't go over the limit. And that's where we have the C groups which ensures that you, you, you stay within the limit uh, that you have chosen for applications. Yeah, you predefine yes. it within you DNA can define Center, that. I'm assuming. Exactly. Okay. And on top of that, all of the Catalyst 9K comes with trustworthy system features, ah, right? Okay. which ensures basically all the security features from operating system perspective. Right. Nobody can tamper the operating system or the hardware. Yeah, these kind of right. things here, right? The image signing, the uh, SUDI support with two-way trust, hardware authentication, runtime defense, secure boot. Mm -hmm. Wow. Multiple okay. of them. So, yeah, yes. you got to make sure you meet all that before you're called trustworthy. That's right. Okay. That's right. Absolutely. Now, okay. before we jump onto the demo, yeah. the other thing that we are making uh, <laughs> it very easy for the developers as well is we are giving them an environment on our Cisco DevNet. Okay. So, they can go to the Cisco DevNet and they'll find a sandbox where they can experiment and develop their application. Okay. And once it's ready, they can actually publish it in the ecosystem exchange. See, I love this because, of course, I love the partnership with DevNet. This continues to grow, uh, but this is a great resource for everybody to use. But you're saying that they can they go through and make sure everything's working. So anybody doing off the shelf, uh, not off the shelf, excuse me, but kind of rolling their own and they're kind of building things, this becomes an environment they can safely play in. And you're saying it can also play a part in actually confirming everything's working correctly. Exactly. Um, to make sure it's right. And that's a probably a free resource, right? With, that's uh, a free with, resource. It's we a are shame providing. it's not available today, but as the time this show comes out, developer.cisco.com, we recommend everybody go check that out. That's true. And that'll make it easier. Well, how about we switch over to the demonstration, because I wanted to see uh, kind of how this works, how do we actually interact with these things. So let's right. take a look at that here. All right, so let's switch over to our Cisco DNA Center. Oh, yes, of course. All right, so that's a familiar screen. Um, now, on the Cisco DNA Center, um, the way you get to the application hosting is you go to the provisioning because you are basically right. provisioning an app. Um, in this uh, screen, you are seeing all the different devices that we have, right? So all of the different Catalyst 9300s that we have in the inventory. You go to the services tab, right? And then you will find the application hosting, okay. right? Now, you'll see a few of them already here, right? Well, you wouldn't normally, but on yours, We've already, you've already installed these. Right, I have Just already installed sure. uh, a few of them here. You've been playing but let ahead me, of time. Okay. Yeah, uh, let me show you uh, how to install an app, okay. right? So I'll go, go here, and uh, the, the type of the application, of course, Docker, Docker? Okay. right? And the second thing that you can choose optionally is the category, because sometimes oh. people want to categorize this, this for monitoring, this for security, IoT, right? Yeah, so especially you see on the screen, that may be a way if you've got multiple applications to quickly see what you're looking for. Exactly, okay. exactly. So I'm gonna say monitoring, uh, and then I'll just go and um, pick my tar file that I have developed, right? And uh, I am going to go ahead and upload, right? Just that easy, okay. Yeah. That's for as uploading simple. it anyway. Yep. Yes. Okay. So once we have uploaded, it is starts show, showing up here yeah. on the okay. DNA Center screen. Okay. Now you can go from here and install it on as many number of Catalyst 9300s as possible. Okay. Right? Whatever number of 9300s you have in your network, right? This is an access switch. You probably have hundreds of them. Right. You can go in there and deploy it with just a few clicks. I'll show you how across all of your that. network. So from that right? one screen, all right, how so does that work? So to deploy that, let me pick a more um, interesting example of perf sonar. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go here and click on this one. Um, you have a few options here to kind of update the application or delete the application if you want, but let me go ahead and get started with the installation. Now, once you are on the first screen, the first thing that you will see is the inventory of devices where it can be installed. All the switches. That's right, okay. and it's intelligent enough to tell you which of these switches are ready, right? So you'll oh. see those green tick marks okay. that these two switches are ready. So let me select these two, uh, but these could be as many as you want, right? right. It could be okay. thousands. So you can select all with one click on the top there, it looks like. Right. Okay. All right, so once you have um, selected that, then you go to the next step here on the configure app, mm -hmm. right? So that's the second step. Now here, you have a few things to choose if you want. Number one is the network. The network. So this, this pulls from 
the different VLANs that we have already set up. Oh, okay, right? that makes more sense. So okay. in which VLAN you want to put this application, okay. right? Uh, so that's the network that I'm going to choose. Uh, I'll choose app hosting. Then you have an option to um, assign a static IP address or just get a dynamic IP address DHCP. from a DHCP server, okay. right? So by default, it's uh, dynamic. I'll keep it as is. And um, another thing here that you can look at is resource allocation. So we talked about CPU and memory. Right. right? This is where you set that up? Yeah, that's where we can set it up. Now, you have a couple of options just to keep it easy. You can just go and use all the allocated space for the application, not right. the operating system. Operating system is separate. Right. Um, or you can customize it. So you can go here and say how much of the CPU I can use. And to have better granularity, we have broken the CPU resource into some units. Okay. And so it's showing up here 4,000 units. Um, you can choose whatever you want um, based on the application. If you have multiple need. applications and the importance of it and that type of thing. Exactly. Okay. Right. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and allocate everything. Uh, now, there are a few other options here for the applications because applications, different applications are different. Some applications need a parameter, some applications need a management IP. Oh, yeah. So okay. we have certain provisions here that you can choose from. Okay, okay. that makes sense. Um, just to depend on what you're running. For Profsonar, I don't need that. So okay. I'm just going to go back here in um, application networking. I've chosen all of the options. One other thing I want to point out is we talked about that interface right, for right. the Docker, right. right? You can have multiple of them. If you have multiple of them, you can go and say additional interfaces, and then oh, you can even. do the same thing there. Okay, In our case, we app. don't, okay. right? Now we go to the next step and confirm and deploy There's the- a summary of everything. Okay, yeah, that's finish. the summary. Okay. Yep, that's what we have chosen so far. I'll go ahead and finish it off. It asks you whether you want to auto start on all of the Catalyst 9300s where you are deploying. Sure. All right, let's go ahead and say yes. All right, now you'll see this screen that is deploying. And as it goes through various processes to deploy and verify and validate, uh, you will see those messages changing there. So it's activating the app now after installing it. And in a moment, it will show that it's all done. Once it's all done, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you a Personar interface okay. where you are getting the stats from the Catalyst 9300s. Yeah, because there's a, there's a little bit of a difference here in terms of what we're using Cisco DNA Center for from the orchestration, and you obviously did the setup and the deployment, all the things that make sense from a this is my network thing perspective, so you can see it all at once, right? But That's right. when it comes to actually managing or working with these applications, mm -hmm. we step away. You've set up that management interface as you spoke of, but now you're going to interact directly with however that specific application needs exactly. to be or networked with, yeah, or worked with. Yeah. Right. It, it, it okay. really depends on the application itself. Some applications have a, you know, a centralized server where you can go and look at all of the different um, application instances right. that are out there, and then you can get all the data or whatever that uh, that application is meant for. Right. Okay. So we see that is all it's done. All done. Yep. Take mark. That means this. Uh, this application is installed on both of the Catalyst 9300 that we have chosen. You can basically manage the entire life cycle of the application from the Within Cisco, Cisco DNS, DNS Center. Center. Okay. Now let's go to the perf sonar screen and show you some of the data that we are getting and we are collecting from the two Catalyst 9300s. Okay. So you see the source and destination, those are the two Catalyst 9300s, and we are starting to get Now, per sonar, obviously, we generally, we're going to use that. It's, a, it's an open source tool. This is That's a right. pretty popular tool for, for measuring link statistics and, and a bunch of different things that will help us understand if there's degradation in network connectivity. And specifically, we want this running out at the network endpoint because that's where the problem is happening between point A and point B, right? That's and so right. we need it out there, but a, a lot of customers have usually had to deploy this. It's valuable enough, they'll go to the trouble of deploying a unique server specifically for this kind of application. And am I right in saying you don't have to do that anymore? You can deploy this on the switch and get the same information, manage it in a lot cleaner way now with very Catalyst. Very easy, very easy. Okay. It's very powerful. So this is great, yes. but specifically you're looking at Perf Sonar when you go into this, not necessarily through Cisco DNA Center at this point, because right. it steps away now and lets you interact with the applications as needed. Exactly, okay. exactly. So application hosting really opens up the door for your imagination, right? right? Yeah. You can build application, you can pick applications off the shelf, you can deploy things, and you know, the sky is the limit from that point. Right. right?
Right. Think about a use case and deploy it in your, in your, in your network. I love it, and the developer.cisco.com for, uh, for practicing and working on this stuff, that's really where things really begin to open up because there's also plenty of stuff right off the shelf we could use, but either way, we got you covered. It's a platform for doing application hosting. This is good stuff. Mohammed. thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Also, guys, appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, again, a number of different resources here that you can go take a look at to 9300 first, but all the other switches are going to be rolling out with subsequent software releases. So stay tuned. We'll have more information on that as it comes out. Thank you for watching TechWise TV. We'll see you on the next one.